Hey guys, how's it going? In this video we're going to look at the specific case of projectile motion for objects launched horizontally. Now this was something you would have done in the National 5 physics course, but it also comes up again in the higher course. So let's get started. It says here that in that 5 physics we saw that objects projected horizontally have both horizontal and vertical motion. We must treat these separately. So this was the key idea to attempting projectile problems at National 5 level, where we have to split the motion into horizontal and vertical components. And the picture here shows an example of this type of motion. So let's say you had a footballer kicking a ball off the edge of a cliff at 6 meters per second. Well, we would know that it had a constant horizontal velocity of 6 meters per second, but that doesn't tell us anything about the vertical motion. Another example is a cannonball fired horizontally from a cannon at 35 meters per second so it would look something like this. So hopefully you remember that kind of motion from National 5. It says here that once launched, there are no horizontal forces acting on the object and therefore it moves with a constant horizontal velocity. So this just means that the horizontal velocity will have the same value at all times. It never changes throughout the motion because there's no unbalanced forces acting on it horizontally. We also say that the horizontal distance travelled by a projectile is called its range. So if we go back to this picture, the range would be from the point at which the ball was kicked, from over here, all the way along until where the ball reaches the water. So it would be from about here all the way along to here, and that horizontal distance would be called its range. We then have a specific equation we can use for horizontal motion. So it says that for any calculations involving horizontal motion, we use SH equals VH times T. So remember this is just your equation relating displacement, velocity and time, where SH is the horizontal displacement measured in metres, VH is the horizontal velocity measured in metres per second, and T is time measured in seconds. Now you probably just remember the equation as S equals V times T from the relationship sheet, but we've given it little subscripts H here to represent the horizontal motion. So if we're dealing with horizontal motion at any time, we can use this equation. If we think about the vertical motion now, it says that vertically the force due to gravity acting on the object is constant, so it undergoes a constant vertical acceleration, equal to the gravitational field strength G, at 9.8 meters per second squared on Earth. And another name for this is the acceleration due to gravity. So vertically, projectiles will always have a constant vertical acceleration due to gravity, and that takes a value of 9.8 meters per second squared on Earth. Obviously, if the object was on a different planet, it would take the acceleration due to the gravitational field strength on that planet. So if it was on the moon, it would be 1.6 meters per second squared, and so on. For any calculations involving vertical motion, we use the equations of motion which we've seen before. So remember the magic word SUVAT which we can write down first before attempting any problems. Though this time we can label the letters S, U and V as S, V, U, V and V, V with the little subscripts of V to represent vertical motion. We also need to be aware of a few key numbers. So for objects projected horizontally, for example of a cliff, the initial vertical velocity U, V will be 0 meters per second. The reason is, if we look back at the picture, when we first start the horizontal motion, the object is not going to be moving vertically in any way yet, so its initial vertical velocity must be zero. And for these objects projected horizontally, it will reach its final vertical velocity, VV, at the bottom of its motion, for example, the ground. Or if we look back at the picture, it will be this point down here where the ball hits the water, so that it would have a final vertical velocity, V subscript V, at this point here. So we've got UV over here, which would be zero, and VV down here, which would be non-zero. Lastly, it says that the acceleration due to gravity A is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's been the case for the previous types of projectile motion that we've looked at already. It then says that the time taken for a projectile to travel horizontally is the same as the time taken for it to travel vertically, so we could write that TH equals TV. This means that we can just write time as T, and when we calculate it for one motion, we can use it for the other. So let's say we're doing a question for an object projected horizontally, and we've split the motion into horizontal and vertical motion, then let's say we've got enough data to analyse the vertical motion first, but we're really asked to find out, say, the horizontal range, which would mean looking at the horizontal motion. Well, that means we need to find the horizontal time t, but we know that the vertical time t is going to be the same, so we could just analyse the vertical motion first and get a value for t that way, and then plug it in to our data for the horizontal motion. So in this way, we can work back and forth between the vertical and the horizontal motion to work out things that we don't know. And it really does help to write down SUVAT for the horizontal and vertical motion first to work out what information you have. Just to remind you of this idea of the time being the same for horizontal and vertical motion, I'm going to show you another animation. So let's say we have a cannon which can fire two cannonballs at the exact same time, and in this case they're going to be fired at 10 meters per second horizontally. 
So if we fire the cannon, you'll notice that both balls hit the ground at the same time. And that is because both balls are going to experience the same acceleration due to gravity downwards and nothing else matters. And we also saw at National 5 level that if we were to say increase the horizontal speed of the projectiles here, we'll still see that both balls hit the ground at the same time. And the reason is, again, both balls are experiencing the same acceleration due to gravity. And it's also the case that if we had two balls of different masses, they would still hit the ground at the same time. Because remember, we're ignoring air resistance in our problems for projectile motion. So if they're both experiencing the same acceleration due to gravity and we're ignoring air resistance, they would still both hit the ground at the same time. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. And make sure you give it one of these. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Whoa.